I'm Kevin. I'm here at New Lenox Earth Day, and I'm here with Sharon White. Sharon, can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on here at Earth Day? Yes, uh, I'm with Pacamama Chicagoland Cohorts, and we are an organization that is trying to educate the world about Earth Day, uh, about Earth and how to keep it sustainable. I think everyone is aware of how much we're in danger. It, the weather, uh, the floods, the hurricanes, all of that's going on, the increased heat, and it's very important to me that people be educated and know what's going on and what they can do. So the purpose of Earth Day, of course, is for people to come and learn the things, learn about it, and learn what they can do to help sustain the Earth. So what's one really big thing that you'd like everybody to hear about about uh, that you would do yourself uh, to help sustain? Uh, stop using plastics as much as possible. So I always have a water bottle. I never use the plastic water bottles, which, yes, they're recyclable once. And most of the time, you know, only 6% are recycled, unfortunately. And that's doing, I, I can go on and on about how much damage that is doing. Uh, I no longer use a, a big tub of laundry detergent. I have a laundry detergent um, that you can just buy online that comes in a cardboard case and it has little papers. They're detergent slips that you put in your laundry. So there's all kind, and there's a plastic station here that tells you all kinds of substitutes for what you have been using so that you can stop using so much plastic. And of course, styrofoam, we have recycling here. Styrofoam can't be recycled. And that's made of styrene, which is a chemical that really can't be broken down totally. So we have so many things that we need to reevaluate what we're using and finding alternatives, and there are alternatives, and that's the good part. There's hope, and there's stuff we can do, and this is where you learn about it. So if I, if I wasn't able to make it here today, and I wanted to learn more about some of the things that you had just discussed, where, is there a website or a Facebook page or something like that that we could? Yes, Pacamama Chicago Land um, uh, Cohorts is, we do have a face page. We give programs for free, and uh, we could send information. Yes, and, and any of the organizations here could probably give you information also. All right, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. Hi, I'm here with, what's your name? Durrell. Durrell, what's, uh, what's the name of our booth here? What are we doing? Well, uh, we have a local group. They're called Pachamama Alliance, and it means Mother Earth. So we like to do presentations and tabling events whenever we can to spread the word. Because 70% of people are very interested and concerned about climate, but they don't talk about it. And so in the news, all you hear about is the negativity, the, the gloom and doom of it all. But we have the solutions we need, and that's what our presentation is all about, showing people that we have the solution, we just need the will to do it. And um, this, this decade is going to be very important as far as the future. So is this, this wheel, is this our wheel of solutions? It is. These are 10 of the 80 that a book called drawdown.org uh, emphasizes. And the size of the pie graph indicates um, how much energy we can save uh, and how much it costs and how much benefit it is. And usually the benefits outweigh the costs on it. But um, what they found was very unusual was refrigeration was the top way we could save. And so when you're finished with your uh, refrigeration, make sure that the it's properly recycled um, because those HFCs are 85 times worse than even carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And as more and more people in the world get refrigeration, we have to make sure that we're using refrigerants that are good for the environment. So is there a place where we could find uh, this information for ourselves? Is there a website or a... Uh, 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 there is. Uh, there's a QR code for our Pachamama group on the bottom there. Uh, we're called the Pachamama Cohorts on Facebook. But I would really recommend this drawdown.org. It has all the information um, you could want to, to see. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Hi, I'm here with Sally from Illinois Extension. Sally, what brings you out here for Earth Day? 
Well, you know, with Extension, we're all about outside. We're, we grow plants, we study insects, we teach you about your garden. Uh, everything you would want to grow, I think, we can, we can help you with. So um, today we have uh, activities. We have um, a little um, monarch project for the kids to uh, make a bracelet. Um, we have information on trees, on vegetables, uh, wildlife, insects, and we are also um, we're giving away free seed today, free garden seed. So there's uh, corn. Uh, watermelons, beets, carrots, there's some flower seeds in there. Um, it's all free for uh, the public to enjoy. That's great. I also see you got like a little instructions on how to grow some of this stuff, which right. I think is great. Right, because we want to get you started out on the right foot and when you get really enthusiastic or if you just want to learn more, you can come and join us at Extension and become a master gardener or a master naturalist or a master composter. That's great. Is there a way for people to find out more about Illinois Extension? Is there a website, phone number, or anything? Oh, sure. Um, so, uh, University of Illinois Extension, we are located at 100 Manhattan Road in Joliet, and our uh, phone number is 815-727-9296, and the website is uh, http colon forward slash two forward slashes web.extension.illinois.edu slash gkw which stands for grundy kankakee and will counties all right and thank come you join us. come join us all right that's sally from illinois extension okay i'm here with uh andy pinelli hi andy uh this is uh, quite the the vi visual of your booth here what do we have going on here so uh, I'm with Citizens Climate Lobby and Citizens Climate Education. We're a nonprofit, uh, nonpartisan organization that educates people on uh, issues related to climate change and also uh, advocating for smart climate solutions, bipartisan legislative solutions to help uh, uh, ease that problem. So today what we're doing is we're talking to people about uh, some things that can help the climate change problem. Uh, we're talking about electrification around the home and uh, some information that we're, we're uh, making available on the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which is the largest climate bill that's uh, been passed. Citizens Climate Lobby had a role to play in that. And that's uh, encouraging people to electrify everything. And then there's, uh, there's government funds that are available for energy efficient appliances on all of these different things where you might, uh, you might uh, electrify your home, whether you're putting solar panels on, whether you're going for electric vehicles, whether you're gonna, your air conditioning's uh, going out and you want to replace it with a heat pump that can both air condition and heat your house. Uh, all of these different things, funds available to upgrade your electrical service. Uh, all of these things are available uh, with, uh, with funding and tax credit uh, available through the Inflation Reduction Act. So we're educating people on that today. Wow, that's, uh, I had no idea that, that, uh, all of, that there's uh, yeah. things available for me yeah. to, to, to... And they, people can get in from it at rewiringamerica.com. There's all of this, uh, this uh, tax credit money that's available and depending on, on your income, uh, up upfront uh, discounts that are available for heat pumps or uh, if you EV chargers or electrical panel, uh, you know, upgrades and stuff like that. So uh, we're handing out information on that uh, in uh, Citizens Climate Lobby. We're always, you know, we have uh, local chapters all over the Chicago area and we're nationwide. We work with a uh, lobbying Congress to, to make good, smart uh, moves like this to try to address the, uh, the climate issue. So is there um, uh, a place where I can find out more about the, the discounts and the, and the, the tax credits, yeah. uh, a website? Uh, 
Yeah, you can uh, go to citizens claim, uh, cclusa.org uh, and, and find out that information. And on the specifics of uh, electrifying everything, you can go to rewireamerica.org. And it's a great movement, and it's part part of the whole process. You know, if, if uh, President Biden's goal was to reduce... Uh, America's carbon emissions by 50% by 2030. And if we electrify everything, uh, taking advantage of the Inflation Reduction Act, and if we put a price on carbon, uh, we can get there. So there's a path forward to do this, and we're trying to educate people on what that path forward is. That's terrific. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Our next booth here, I'm here with... Uh, Peter Clovering, and I'm here with Homewood Disposal Service. Uh, Peter, what's uh, what's going on with our, our our booth here? What's what do we got going? Sure. So Homewood Disposal, we pick up all of uh, New Lenox, all the residents of New Lenox, and uh, we're here just promoting recycling and uh, what items to recycle. That's that's the best thing we're doing here today. Um, the other thing we're talking a little bit about uh, for those interested is uh, our natural gas trucks and how those have less pollution for the air quality around here in New Lenox. So what are some of the things that uh, we can and can't recycle? Yeah, we get a lot of questions on that. Um, some of the big questions we always get is plastic bags. So your plastic bags um, should not go in your recycling bin. All right, so those should go either in the garbage if you have to, but those also can go back to the store that you got it from, right? You see those in front, maybe Jewel, um, Walgreens, Walmart, they have little boxes in front and that's where those plastic bags should go. Any kind of plastic bag should go back there and then that's separate and then they can recycle that item. The other question we get a lot is pizza boxes. That's a big question. Um, if it's a clean pizza box, absolutely go ahead and recycle it. If it's got a lot of grease, um, Let's not recycle that. Maybe tear the lid off and you can recycle that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much for your time. Sure. Thank you. Hi. I'm here with Marta from Will County. Marta, what brings you out here for Earth Day? Hi. Well, I work for the Resource Recovery and Energy Division. It's in land use. And uh, we have a website called Will County Green. And we try to provide lots of information to residents and students and teachers uh, all about ways that they can recycle. We have an environmental educator who goes into schools. And today I'm, I'm here, we're giving away some blue jean pencils. They're pencils that are made out of blue jeans. And the reason we're doing that is next uh, month we're gonna be having a textile collection event at the county building, May 8th through the 12th. So we wanna promote that event. We also have household hazardous waste collections, electronics collections, so we just have a whole bunch of information and if anybody needs to know where to recycle or how to get rid of something odd, they can always go to our website, willcountygreen.com. That's great, It's because it's really hard to understand how to recycle. Everybody wants to, but I think the knowledge is great. Yeah, now more and more things become recyclable, reusable, uh, donatable every day. And uh, yeah, uh, keeping up with that can be difficult. So certainly, yeah, um, if in doubt, check us out and see what's going on. All right, thank you. That's Marta, Marta. Marta from the Will County. I'm here with M Martin Bobin, yep. and uh, he's going to tell us about our uh, annual recycling day. Yes, New Lenox Township conducts an annual recycle day. It is May 6th this year on a Saturday from 8 a.m. till noon at the New Lenox Township uh, office on South Cedar, 1100 South Cedar. There we collect used electronics, something new this year. We're going to be sh uh, offering a shredding service for uh, sensitive documents, legal documents, those kinds of things. We also will be collecting uh, oil, used motor oil, antifreeze, tires, uh, and your conventional recyclables, plastic, glass, paper. We'll also take clothing, used clothing. We have a, a drop-off point for that as well. Um, we have at least 20 Lincoln Way West football players who will be performing community service helping us at that event. We average over 300 uh, vehicles in a four-hour window there that come through. So uh, it's been a very successful event. Uh, one of the big questions we get on that day is what, what can we do with uh, hazardous chemicals, your household chem pool chemicals, uh, aerosols, propane bottles, those kinds of things. We also help fund a household hazardous waste event that takes place on September 9th at the Spencer Trail Campus. That's a county uh, event, but the township and the village and Sheriff Fest 
are all players and help with that event. That's a very big event, an expensive event that is put on by the, those players. And that is where you can bring those fluorescent bulbs, hazardous material, chemicals, gasoline, those kinds of things that we cannot take on the recycle day. So. So, so as uh, somebody who's been through this, uh, the, my first time I was a little intimidated. You know, you're, it's four hours, there's the whole township. Like, uh, tell us a little bit about how quickly somebody gets through this line. Uh, well, we, like I said, in a four hour winter, we had over 300. So literally once you're in there, we can get people in and out of there in a couple of minutes. It's a, it's a full circle type thing. And we have some people that come that have some of everything. They may have glass, they have recyclables, electronics, tires, and some people come, they may only have one of those items. So if you only have one of those items, we can circle you around and get you to drop off and exit right out of there. But as far as <laughs> the line to come in, sometimes that, uh, you know, that gets, it varies sometimes right at the beginning eight o'clock we'll have a pretty good line of people coming in and then it thins out a little bit as it goes on but uh yeah it's a very popular event and uh like i said years ago when it started it it, it wasn't maybe as widely attended but today uh, we know people are aware of it. Also, our newsletter, our township newsletter, will be going out within the next week, and it, all that information will be in there, too. So Yeah, I have to say, uh, it, it, I moved through the line really fast. It was great. I, I really appreciate everything that you and your your volunteers and everybody's doing for this. So thank you very much. Yeah, it's caught on pretty big, you know, with the volunteers we have, our staff, and then the Lincoln Way football program really has jumped up and helped us, you know, get plenty of plenty of help there. So. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for our next booth, I'm here with, uh, what's your name? Tanner. Tanner, uh, what do we got going on here? What's uh, what's the booth? So I work over here at the Will South Cook Soil and Water. We do a lot of things to try and help uh, farmers get associated with grants. It might help them in implement uh, conservation practices. So there's... Uh, government grants for farmers for conservation so a lot of times with with farmers uh, especially up here in northern illinois it's a really hilly landscape so when we have a lot of hills like that the water ends up running off and eroding the land a lot of the time so we look to implement ways where we can help improve the drainage kind of you know and we hook them up with the grants in the process to, to try and cu cut the cost because some of these jobs can end up running close to 35 grand They're, they get pretty expensive Wow, that's great stuff. Um, and how does that help the farmer? Well, it actually improves the whole uh, quality of the soil. A lot of the times, well, farming in general nowadays, it's a really uh, not sustainable practice. Like they end up ripping up a lot of the land and the soil quality drops over time. So we're looking to help improve the old way of farming because this was, this was a common practice for years ago. They used to use cover crops, conservation practices all the time, but it's kind of gotten lost in the process of growing corn and soy all the time. So we're looking to help try and put the conservation back into farming. That's terrific. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, no problem. It was nice getting to meet you guys. Hi, I'm here with John over here at Earth Day. What brings you out here? Well, I'm with an organization called These Streets Are Holy, and we do music mentoring and urban gardening with kids in at-risk areas. So today, being Earth Day, I wanted to focus a little more on our urban gardening program where each kid in like a summer camp would get a five-gallon bucket and a plant that we teach them how to plant and to grow and what makes a happy plant and we we tie that in with God's word through God's world okay and how can uh, people find out about these streets are holy well you can look up our Facebook page these streets are holy or and we have a website these streets are holy dot org where you can do among other things uh, like our various t-shirts and stuff like that you know all the the merch stuff <laughs> So, all right. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, well, I know it's it's a little rough day out here, so I, <laughs> no, we probably won't have the crowd would like to see. But uh, you know, I would encourage anyone to come out, be part of the Earth Day, and um, one way or another, try to take care of our planet. Right. All right. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Lot. That's John from These Streets Are Holy. Yeah. Okay. For our next booth, I'm here with uh, what's your name? Julie Mason. Julie, uh, what what are we doing here? What's the booth about? Well, I'm here with the Forest Preserve District of Will County, and so I'm just providing information about, about our preserve system, our trails, our forest preserves, um, our land in general. So, um, you know, I've I've lived in Will County for a long time, and I, I'm not familiar with a, a lot of your a lot of the trails around. What's your favorite trail? 
My favorite trail, I have a lot of favorites, but this time of year, my favorite trail is at Messenger Woods Nature Preserve, just because the wildflowers are spectacular. And um, where is Messenger Word Woods uh, located in the county? It's in Homer Glen, so it's, you know, it's just maybe 15 minutes from here, actually. That's if I wanted to find out more information about the Forest Preserve District of Will County, what, how would I get that information? So our website is fabulous. I would go to uh, reconnectnature.org, which is our, our Forest Preserve District official website. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh, for our next booth, I'm here with... Lori Tracy. Uh, Lori, what, uh, what's the booth about? What are we doing here? Uh, well, we're from St. Jude Parish here in New Lenox and uh, with our Peace and Justice Committee, and we market fair trade. And um, we mainly do it to get the word out for folks that they can support poor farmers and small co-ops in uh, different countries um, that are trying to make a living. Uh, it's uh, Latin America, Asia, and Africa are where the products are from. So can you explain a little bit more about what fair trade is? Uh, fair trade is, first of all, this is all organic, so it's, it's grown safely, you know, um, with environmental, good, good environmental practices. And also the people that work for Equal Exchange are all treated fairly, good wages, safe working conditions. And they're actually paid ahead of time, and then they rely on churches and groups to help move the product here in the States to help them make a living. So this all comes, uh, is imported from those locations that you... Yes. Equal Exchange is a big company that helps, that, that organizes the co-op and helps the product get out to people. So we can help people over there. So um, these these products, they, they all, um, you know, the, the, are they equivalent to what I might find in the store? They're better. They're <laughs> uh, the coffee, there's coffee, uh, we have tea chocolate and it's all like I said organic so it's it's healthy safe that's why it fits in well at this event um, and uh, olive oil hot chocolate and uh, yeah it's very good product and you can't find a lot of this in the regular stores that's that's why it's a treat to have it here so so how would I get in touch with you if I wanted to to purchase some of this product and I'm not here today because you know um, you can go online to equal exchange Dot org and buy it online just like you do on Amazon or any of those um, okay. also um, at our church uh, on the first Sunday of every month we have a table where we market these products too and we don't do it to make any money we strictly do it to raise awareness about helping others that's the bottom line here so. that's terrific thank you very much for your time Welcome. thank you thank you hi I'm here with Bonnie and Dana from Cross of Glory Church what brings you out here for Earth Day um, well, we have a climate action team at our church, and we are trying to help our church be um, zero waste. Uh, we're looking into solar to be maybe carbon neutral. We're doing everything we can because it's an urgent matter to help our planet. And we're also teaching people in our congregation and the community to do what the church is doing. And uh, is there anything else, um, or is there any way people can find out about what you're doing? Is you know where you're located, how we can contact you? We have a Cross of Glory has a website. If you go to the website, we have our climate action team portion on that website, which is all kinds of resources for people. Okay, that's great, and that's Bonnie and Dana from Cross of Glory Church. Hi, I'm here with Jen. Jen, what brings you out here to Earth Day here? So our Thornridge Science Club got invited to do the event again. We came here last year and this year we are just improving our tables and educating about wind turbines, sea level rise, coral reef bleaching, and ocean acidification. Okay. So you got three tables out here. I, I see the pinwheel going here. Yeah, so the high school students from the club are explaining about wind turbines and they are explaining how the wind generates power and can create electricity with that power. That's great. And then you got this other table here. So the sea level rise, because of climate change, sea levels are rising and that is going to cause the ocean to absorb more heat, which is detrimental to our environment. Okay. And then you got that. Uh, Last, I think we got a little grapple going here. And they got that last table over there across the way. Right, so the ocean acidification, the students are actually showing a demonstration about how carbon dioxide gets absorbed into the 
ocean water and it turns the ocean acidic, which can then dissolve sea creatures like shells, coral, and that type of thing. All right, thank you. And uh, that's Jen from? Thornridge High School in Dalton, Illinois. Beautiful, thanks for being out here on this Earth Day. Hi, I'm here with Jan. Jan, what brings you out here to uh, uh, Earth Day here in New Earth Lenox? Day. Well, I'm part of what's called the Pachamama Chicagoland Alliance. Uh, we are here to try and promote healthy behaviors. We don't, with the Pachamama, we don't just point out the bad things that are happening in our environment, but solutions to them, what we can do to prevent them. For instance, one thing that we have in our environment that we have to try and get rid of is the types of plastics that we have manufactured. Too many things are made of plastic. One of the things that makes plastic is this little thing called a nurdle. Every single bit of plastic made on this planet has started out in one of these little plastic rosin bits called nurdles. Even these little devices that you get at your zoo or at a museum, these things start out as little nurdles. In fact, there's an exhibit going on right now at the Museum of Science and Industry that you can learn more about nurdles and plastic. But we're trying to get them out of our environment because they're in our water and the animals are consuming them. You, if you break out into a d dead fish, you see whales, all sorts of plastic within them. Even turtles mistake nurdles for food and so turtles are dying off because they're consuming something that they mistake for food. So we're really trying to promote healthy solutions. For instance, one thing you could try and do is instead of having a, gla a glass, not a glass bottle, a plastic bottle of milk, do something in cardboard like this, or even water containers come in cardboard. You don't have to have everything made of plastic. Um, we have manufactured forks and spoons and such that are made of plastic when you can actually get them made of bamboo. The cost is not really that significant, but it decomposes in your own backyard if you have a compost heap. So again, you don't have to have plastic in your life. When you have things that are sent to you from different manufacturers, if you buy online, instead of using little bubble wraps like this, which, yeah, they're fun to open up, but they also end up in the environment, you could have ask your manufacturers to plant, put stuff in their boxes made of paper instead. This will break down in a compost heap. This will take about 50 years to break down in a compost heap. So we're really trying to promote different behaviors you can do and I have like handouts that I can give to you that you could take a look at and see what can I do in my home as every one of us here does one action. It's one last piece of plastic in the environment. Great, thanks. And I'd just like to add um, just recently we bought a six pack Oh, yes. And it was not in this. Oh, good. Yes. It was in a paper coated yes, ring thing, which I thought was really good. And getting it the day before Earth Day, I thought, wow, what a coincidence. Oh, yes. One last thing, if I may. Um, the state of Illinois has been wonderful about trying, right now, there's a bill going on trying to get rid of the use of foam. And so instead of having your, pa your plant, your plant, your meat, yeah, packed in foam, you don't have to. Uh, you can have it packed in paper that has a type of a protective wax paper instead of foam. Foam will never break down. In our lives, foam has not broken down. From the first piece of foam you'll find on the planet, somewhere wherever it was first made. And that's just sad to know that it's going to live longer than us. <laughs> you know? But it also, it's bad for the environment. It's bad for the animals. It's bad for us. We really don't want foam, and the state of Illinois is doing something about it, I'm happy to say. Yes. All right, that's great. Thank you so All much. All right, thank you. That's Jan from, I'm going to get this wrong. Pachamama Chicagoland Cohart Alliance. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, you. Thank you for being here, Nate. Sure. Hi, I'm here with Josie and Parker. Uh, could you guys tell us what brings you out here on Earth Day? Mm -hmm. um, I'm here with 4-H, uh, and we're learning about uh, food waste. Um, this is my cousin. <laughs> I'm just out here for the fun of it. You know, it's important to help our earth. Um, so I came from down from Chicago about an hour drive just to help my grandma set this up and to work a booth. Okay, could you tell us a little bit about food waster? Yeah, so um, when we waste food, it releases something called methane gas in landfills. Um, and that's about 85% worse than carbon dioxide. Um, approximately we waste around um, one pound of food per person each day um, and so something that can help prevent that is um, making uh, like a menu for the week and then when you go out grocery shopping you can only get the ingredients for those um, like for the menu and so you don't have like too many leftovers that can go bad if that does happen you can always freeze um, the food and then especially like stuff like fruits and vegetables 
um, companies will just throw them away if they're even slightly bruised or crooked because they don't feel like they can sell them in stores. Um, and then there's also some things with expiration dates that he can explain. Yeah, so um, something important to remember is that the government doesn't regulate our expiration dates. Uh, almost always companies and grocery stores set expiration dates uh, in cahoots with their marketing department. Um, things like milk and eggs can last a lot longer, so eggs usually at least a month past their expiration date because they want you to come back and buy more, but it's important not to waste that food. So even if, uh, if you do overbuy or, um, or you think that you might not be able to eat or use all the food within the time that it is safe to eat or use it, you can donate it, you can give it to a friend, or you can freeze it, like Josie said. Sometimes if you can't freeze it, like please don't free <laughs> freeze your milk or eggs. You can uh, sometimes make, uh, make things with it that you can freeze or that can be kept. Um, so it's important not to waste food because it can uh, help helps our environment. All right, thank you guys. Uh, thank you for being here. Yes. And uh, that's Josie and Parker. Uh, glad you're here for Earth Day and that's a good education on food waste. Unfortunately, due to weather here in New Lenox. Uh, we were had some sleet and some rain. Uh, we were unable to visit all of the booths, um, but I hope you enjoy the booths that we did see. My name's Kevin Shannon. I was here with Rich Arlowski, and thank you for watching. <laughs>